Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the Enchanted Basin. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jenny. It is very nice to meet you. I like to do videos that are Halloween or witchy oriented, cat lady box unboxings, vegan taste tests, craft with me videos, and chronic illness awareness chats. Shout out to all my fellow spoonies. If any of that interests you, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Also make sure to hit that bell so you are notified every single time I upload, which is every Monday and Thursday. And today we are finally doing a craft with me video. I've tried to film these in the past and it can be kind of hard because I only have one camera and so it can be hard to do all the different angles, but I, I, I'm gonna go for it today. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys how to make some pillowcases um, for throw pillows. These are super easy to do. I did these last year um, for some around my house and I was like, I need to show you all. So I'm gonna try my best to show you all the information that I can to make this as easy as possible. I do think you need a sewing machine. You could do this by hand, but I feel like that would take a while. So if you have a sewing machine, you can do like either straight stitch or a zigzag stitch. As long as you have some cutting scissors, like fabric scissors, or you can use a rotary cutter for your fabric. If you use a rotary cover, you're gonna need a cutting mat. But again, basic fabric scissors, fabric scissors <laughs> will work best. Try not to use craft scissors. It's just not great for the fabric. I mean, you can, but I prefer fabric scissors. Um, and then some pins in order to hold your fabric in place as you get ready to sew it. So let me show you the pillowcases that I made last year to give you an idea of the style that we're going for. Okay, so the first one I made was this really fine, I don't know, kind of Victorian, kind of not like Halloween style. Um, it is kind of glittery, but the glitter doesn't come off. Got this fabric from Joann's last year. But you can see it's just a simple square on the front and then the back, how I do it is there is one flap here and then the other side is another flap. So all you do is you stick the pillow into it. I'm sorry if you can hear my cat, she's trying to play around and some paper that's on the floor so sorry about that but there's that one also let me show you um in case your fabric is maybe like a weird width or you run out of fabric to do the right amount of lengths that you need you'll understand what that means soon let me show you how you can kind of fix that so for this one it's the same exact fabric as the other but on the back side i didn't have enough fabric to go all the way across so i had to cut another little strip i just sewed it to it did that on this side too so that way you can get all the fabric you need i also did this with this like holographic bat i have these in my little i use a rocking chair for my desk chair just because i love it and i feel like a cute witchy old granny <laughs> sitting in it so um but these are like what i sit on to make it cushioned these are the first ones i made and when i did it you can see it doesn't close all the way. So that's why on these, I made the overlap a little bit more on the back side. I'll bring the camera over here and kind of show you the pattern, how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna use this fabric. I actually got last year from Joanne. And then if you saw my video already earlier, I'm gonna use this really cool like mud black cat on orange background fabric. So I'm gonna use those and for the pillows, you don't need to go out and buy like pillow fillers or pillow trailer pillows, if you know what I mean, like from like a craft store, I mean you can if you really need to, but for me, here's what I'm doing. First that I'm gonna do, um, this is actually a pillow, like I think it was either my mom's or my grandmother's, they were just downsizing, they didn't want pillows anymore and I was like, oh, I will take these because these actually, pillowcase zips off and so for me I'm probably going to donate the pillowcases and that leaves me with a great base pillow to work with. So you can totally just use those. Um, I'm also, if you've seen what I've talked about before, I normally have these on my little ottoman in the background. I'm going to use these. This doesn't zip off but because these pillowcases are easily removable, um, I can always take it off if I want to. But I'm just gonna use these if you don't have any, like throw pillows that maybe you're wanting to like rehab, you can always go to a, a um, thrift store and find pillows super cheap there. 
Um, I'd maybe recommend washing them <laughs> if possible. Follow the directions on washing them, but that's a great way to have some pillows to use for making your pillows. <laughs> that made sense. Um, yeah, so let me bring you around. I'll show you the pattern that we're gonna do, and so that way you can work on cutting out your fabric. By the way, I don't know if I said it or not, we are in my dining room right now. This is actually where I do all my crafting. Um, this is also kind of our office. So, <laughs> welcome to the dining room. It's a mess, but you know, so it is. But <laughs> let me turn this around and I'll show you the pattern we're gonna work with. Okay, so here's, I just kind of wrote it out really quickly for y'all, but we're gonna have two different, you'll have the front side you're gonna have the back side. So for the front side, as far as figuring out how much fabric you need for each of these little pieces, what you're gonna do, measure your pillow. So when you measure it, don't just go like flat across. I want you to go from one seam all the way to the other seam and measure that because that will make sure you have enough space to cover all the way around and not just flat, if that makes sense. So definitely go from one seam all the way other to the other when measuring. Um, most of your pillows are probably going to be square, so it should be the same um, both sides. But, um, you know, measure to make sure. So, that means you're going to do um, your height and your length measurements and add one inch. So, if you have a 19 by 19 pillow, you're going to end up doing a 20 by 20 cutout of fabric. What this is going to do is it's going to allow you a half inch on each side, just as extra. I like to have an extra little wiggle room, make sure you can get the pillow in there easily. Um, and it just allows me in case I accidentally do a larger seam allowance, I have space for it. So you're gonna do a fourth inch seam allowance. Now, for the back, the way I like to do it is to do two panels, just because I'm not very good with doing zippers. If you're someone that knows how to do zippers really well, you could honestly probably just do another panel and then insert a zipper. Um, I am not that competent with those and I don't feel comfortable and I find this to be a much easier way. So you're going to do two different panels for the back. Um, the first one, you're going to do the same height as you did for the front. So again, 20 inches. So it'll be 20 inches here. And then what you're going to do is half of the front plus two inches. So again, it's 20 divided by two is 10 plus two makes it 12. Again, make sure to do this according to your um, measurements on your pillow. This is just what mine is. That's what I'm going to do. The right panel. So this is going to go on the left side of the pillow case. So here, let me show you kind of the pillowcase so you can get an idea. So we have like the left panel and then you'll have the right panel. So it'll pillow will kind of just swoop on in between those if that makes sense. Um, so then the back, or sorry, the right panel, again, you're gonna do same height as the front, 20 inches, and then you're gonna do um, half the length plus two to three inches. Um, this is just kind of personal preference. I would probably go more three inches just to make sure um, you have plenty of overlap so you don't have that pillowcase like widening. Up. Oh my Lord, I'm so sorry about my cat. Miss Dots. <laughs> I like to do a little bit extra just to make sure um, the pillowcase doesn't open on me in the back. But if your pillow filler is very, very stiff and you don't think you're gonna be able to slip it in pretty easily, maybe they're more towards the two inches. So that's gonna be a personal preference and depending on um, your fabric and your pillow choice. So let's just go ahead and get to cutting the fabric. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do um, before you even start cutting, make sure to iron your fabric so it's nice and flat and smooth. You don't have any creases or wrinkles that are gonna affect the cutting process and making sure you get a nice, um, clean, even cut. So what I'm doing, I'm lining mine up on this mat just because it has measurements on it. So this is the easiest way for me. If you don't have that, you could literally, I like metal craft rulers. You probably just get a regular ruler, measure it out. I would maybe do it inside out if you're going to do that then measure it out and then you can draw a line on where you need to cut this fabric is actually right at the length through me my pillows are actually a 20 by 20 so i'm going to need to do 21 by 21 so for me this is actually exactly 21 inches um wide well 
I have it folded over. I have it doubled, so it's 42 inch. Fold it over so that I can get two panels at once. Um, but you could absolutely do like, you know, one layer and then another. Whatever you're most comfortable with, but for me, this is just easiest. Um, less cuts I have to do easier on my hands. 21 inches here, and then this, mine only goes to 17, so I need to do another three inches afterwards, which would be right here. And you can totally, like I said, use scissors for this. You can, um, I'm just turning it because it'll be easier for me to cut rather than trying to cut it off the table now that I've already measured it. You can, like I said, totally cut it with just a pair of scissors. You can cut it with um, a rotary cutter, whatever is easiest for you, um, given the tools and space and everything that you have. So let's cut this one. Okay, so again, since I doubled it over, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut where I had it in half. Okay, and also for this one, I did allow extra, I'm gonna cut off this, I don't know, this extra <laughs> edging on um, there. I did make sure in the other side, I had it line up to this part rather than this far edge because I knew I wanted to cut this off. So now I have two front panels. Let's work on the back panels. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I'm actually putting the fold up here to do our length because again, it's gonna be the same. So for me, 21 inches here. And then the first side, I think I'll do the left panel, our full length. So again, 21 inches by half of it, 10.5 plus two inches, so 12.5. Okay, and so obviously this isn't the full fabric. There's a little bit extra. So now all you gotta do is cut here and then you can cut down this line again and you'll have two of those panels. Okay, and then for the right panel, again, we're gonna do 21 inches or whatever your measurement is by I'm gonna do 13.5. So again, for you, it could be 12 or 13. Again, just do it based on what your pillow size is. So I'm gonna do a cut. Again, this is on the fold. This we will get two pieces. I'm only doing this because I am doing two pillows. If you're only doing one pillow, then for each of these things, you only need one front panel one uh, for the back, then you only need one left and one right panel. But I'm doing a double because I'm doing two pillows. So keep that in mind when you're figuring out all of these cuts. So again, I'm gonna do um, my 21 inches by 13.5. Okay, so now that we have all of our sides cut out, first thing I'm gonna do is each of these back panels, take one of the longer sides, you're gonna fold it in maybe half an inch or so all the way down, and you're just gonna do one seam all the way down. This is because this will be the side that's facing out, and you wanna make sure it has a nice clean edge so there's, you know, not just raw edges there, and it also protects fabric from potentially uh, unraveling on you. So I would go ahead and maybe press this with an iron, that's what I did. I'm just gonna go ahead and seam one straight line all the way down. Okay, I kind of changed the angle, so hopefully you, you'll be able to see this a little bit better because I want you to make sure to see what we're doing. We're gonna pin everything together. So we have both of our panels that we just sewed our little straight hem on it. And then we have our front panel. So what we're gonna do, actually lay this, lay right side up, and then you're gonna take one panel. At this point, it doesn't matter which one you do, just make sure the hem that you do is in the middle, it is not at the edge. So you're gonna line up your edges on these. 
do one panel and then you're going to do your other panel on top. Again, take the hem that you just did, have it facing towards the middle, and line up your edges. And then you're going to pin all the way around on this. Don't pin this because, again, we want this open to be able to put the pillow in. Now, in this section, you are going to have three layers of fabric. So you'll have one flap, you'll have the other flap, and you're going to have the front panel. You do want to sew all three of those together to make sure it closes your flaps. So let's go ahead and pin all the way around and then we will sew it. Okay, so now we are gonna sew everything together. I kind of forgot something. For your thread, get thread that matches your fabric. Um, unless you wanna do like a contrasting thread, then sew it, it will show. That can be like a fun little look. I'm doing black thread because it matches, for the most part, the black fabric. Um, I'll probably use it on the orange though, so it might be a little contrasting. I think that could be fun. Also, for the fabric, I recommend straight 100% cotton. Do not use knit fabric unless you have the needle for stretch fabric because knit's a little bit more finicky. Um, you have to be really careful as far as stretching it so it doesn't get all ruffledy. And just, I recommend, especially for beginners, just use 100% cotton, use like quilters fabric. You can find it, especially at Joann's or Hancock fabric or you know online wherever you get it. Just make sure if it says like quilters fabric or that kind of thing, you should be good to go. So um, let me pull you down to the sewing machine and we'll just sew all the way around and then we'll have our pillowcases done. Okay, so now let's sew them together. What I'm gonna do, um, you can either start right at the corner or I like to start in the middle of the two back panels where they meet, um, just cause I like to get that sewn together. It provides a nice uh, base to make sure all three are sewn together. Kind of helps with movement, even though everything's pinned together. That's my preference, but I think you could start here as well. You're gonna use a straight stitch. If you do that, also make sure you back stitch the beginning just to make sure that thread is not gonna come loose. And then we are just gonna sew all the way around and we'll be done. So let's get to it. Okay, so when you get to the corner, get about, you know, get your needle pretty close to like half to a quarter inch away so you can have that seam allowance. Have it away from this side, your far side. What you're gonna do is lift up your presser foot, turn your fabric, and now you're ready to start going down. Okay, so I got my pillowcase all sewn. Let's turn inside out. Now all we gotta do is put our pillow in it. Let's see how it looks. Keep a little 
little squishy squish. <laughs> Alright, and there we are. See, this looks so nice. Looks so fancy. Um, and on the back, you can see a little flap that stays closed over this. But also, it's very easy to open, so that way if you want to take a pillow out, wash these. It's totally easy to do. On these, I mean, there you could totally finish the edges after you, like, turn it inside out. If you want to go all the way around and do an edging, you totally can. You can add ribbon. You could add lace. There are so many options on this. So I'm going to do the Mod Cat pillowcases, and I'll show you how everything looks at the very end. Okay, you guys, and so the pillows are done. On these orange ones, I want to show you, I did end up doing a little edging on this all the way around. I just feel like it gives it a little bit nicer touch, but that's totally unnecessary. You don't have to. I just feel like it kind of helps hold in the pillow a little bit better versus this, but this is still still completely fine to do. So, um, yeah, let me turn it around. So, yeah, I really hope um, all of this made sense. I am not a professional seamstress or anything. I'm just someone... Who likes to craft in DIY and so so hopefully this helps you if you're interested in doing the same if you have any questions definitely feel free to comment down below I tried to film it the best I could but I'm sure maybe there's something that doesn't quite make sense or you couldn't quite see what I was doing definitely feel free any questions you have comment below I'm happy to answer those the best I can but yeah, uh, thank you all so much for joining me. I really hope you had a fun time. Hope maybe you learned something. And yeah, I hope you're doing wonderful. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.